Welcome to Keeping It Real, where we feature entrepreneurs who are passionate about their business and have shared their story in our guest blog, ShareYourStories.online. Today, we'd like to introduce you to Anise Van Ryan, who is a reinvention mentor and women's empowerment coach with a focus on life sustainability. And yes, and joins us from London, England. We are super thrilled to have the opportunity to speak with you today and welcome to Keeping It Real. Thank you so much for having me, Trish. It's a pleasure to be connected again. You know, what's really wonderful is we were talking uh, just before we went live about how wonderful these platforms are that we can come together and, uh, you know, you're in London, England, and I'm here in Canada, and how small the world has become. Uh, Absolutely. One of the things that you talk about in your uh, guest blog is you talk about the fact that you take a perspective and we have to look at those opportunities and reinvent ourselves. And certainly during these particular times, I'm sure you're finding the folks that you are working with are also struggling or coming up with some wonderful opportunities based on our current conditions. So tell us a little bit about the work that you do and how you help people notice those signposts for change. Well, so as you said, I am known as the reinvention mentor, um, which has everything to do with my my own story. Oh, sorry, I'm losing my voice all of a sudden. <clears throat> Um, and um, what I do is I help women who are ready to take back control of their life to actually become financially and emotionally independent by creating the business that will sustain the life they desire. So I do so by helping them first um, gain the clarity as to what they want that life to look like then to um, help them build the confidence uh, as well as the mindset to dare go after it. Uh, then I help them set up the business or revamp the business. I'm a personal branding strategist also. And then last but not least, I help them put into place the uh, systems, the tools, the work-life balance and the self-care that will actually um, allow them to make all of it sustainable. So, you know, you have a really wonderful um, story. You know, we all go into um, a passion for what we do as an entrepreneur. And you yourself are a living example of your own story. So tell us a little bit about how you came to where you were in your corporate life and how you came to being an entrepreneur and starting this wonderful business. Well, in fact, I became, um, I was in the corporate world for 25 years. And uh, something like now 12 years ago, I started a re reconversion, became an executive coach, did that for eight years. Um, and then life stood in the way. I uh, left a toxic relationship, lost absolutely everything, um, left with 43 euros. And uh, I had to move in with my sister for and her family for one year, which at 57 is not necessarily an easy thing to do. No. Uh, and from there, um, what made a huge difference for me is that I started seeing that this was in fact an amazing opportunity to reconsider all my choices in life and business. So two major decisions came out of that. One was that I decided that I no longer wanted to work as an executive coach, but that I wanted to help women entrepreneurs instead. That was the first decision. The second was, I'm my, my roots are Dutch. My last name Van Rijn is Dutch. My parents were Dutch, uh, but I grew up in France um, and I've lived there most of my life, but I've never felt home there. But I've also lived in the Netherlands and that never have felt home there and so where do you go and my daughter who was back then studying at London School of Economics said oh, but mommy you have to come to London it's so much you so I didn't give it a second thought I just moved to London and uh, on the 21st of July this year it will be five years ago that I arrived at 58 in London with just two suitcases no income no savings just eight weeks of house sitting and the, the, the ball started rolling from there because a week later someone in, uh, so, someone uh, said you should join the Athena network so I contacted them and um, to make that story short, three months later, I bought the uh, franchise of Athena Central London um, with not, without the first cent to pay for it. I still didn't have a roof. Um, I just sort of out of the box. Um, and for me, where there is a problem, there's always a solution. So um, I just 
thought, okay, if she doesn't need the money up front, I'm going to make an offer. And I offered to pay back over four years, which I did. Uh, so now I finally finished paying. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so, so everything that I am teaching my clients, I have applied to myself. I'm a walking example of uh, the fact that what I'm teaching my clients is working. Well, you know, and that's a really wonderful um, testament to your own resilience and being able to take opportunities or circumstances and turn them into opportunities. If, if you were to speak to someone sort of with that outside the box thinking who's maybe struggling and thinking of they, they've always had a business idea in mind, but they've never had the courage to sort of leave one opportunity and pursue another. Is there is there any advice that you would give to someone about who, who may be thinking of making that leap? Because I think there's lots of times where people think of a, a second act career as an example. Yeah, and usually what stops them is fear because fear is what stops us all. And yeah. the key here is always to use fear as a fuel as opposed to let it paralyze you. So um, yeah, I, I, I run full workshops on that topic. So that would be too short here. But um, the very first thing I always say is to have a very clear vision because uh, it is tough. Um, and if you don't know, it's your GPS. If, if you don't know where you're going, uh, you will never have the courage to actually go for it. So the vision is the essential component. Uh, it's the foundational part. Uh, and then your mindset. Uh, so I always talk about reframing. Uh, every time you start thinking about impossibilities, uh, and my name, Agnes, with a capital Y in it is because I say yes to life. So I am all about possibilities. So every time you think about an impossibility, ask yourself, reframe and ask yourself, what if? What if there were another answer? What if there were another option? Um, and the other thing that I always say very often as well is every single day we only have 100% of our energy. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's not. Today it's not, I'm very tired, it's the end of the <laughs> week. But it still is 100% of what I have. Right. What do you choose to focus it on? So I had that discussion this morning with uh, one of my Athena members. Um, and uh, everything she was saying was yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. Um, and I said, okay, reframe. What if you were looking at it from the angle of possibilities? And what if the, 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 the energy you are wasting in resisting, in thinking of impossibilities, what if you could use that instead on taking action? And I gave a, a series of examples of, of what she could be doing about that. Um, then it's all about... Um, Ultimately, when you think of it, the only thing that can help us uh, get started in changing is, is to raise our awareness of self. So becoming conscious of what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're saying is what then can help us start making conscious choices because we are all where we are in life as a consequence of our choices but most of the time they were not conscious so what can you do to actually start making conscious choices raise your awareness of, of self have a strong vision and from there start becoming intentional and focused every single day you know, I really love your reference to the fact that fear is the thing that stops us the most because that, uh, you know, to your example where you were talking about the client who is always using but, you know, yes, I can do this, but, or I'd like to do this, but, and we always seem to make up excuses for why yes, we excuses. can't do certain things, yeah. right? Yeah. So is there something that you would say to a, a, a client who's, who's really paralyzed by the fear and has sort of convinced them, talk themselves out of doing something? So, you know, the acronym uh, false evidence appearing real for, for the word fear, but that's what most people know. I have a very defin a simple definition of fear. Fear is um, the anticipation of something that, will ha that you fear may happen, but that probably won't. won't yeah. How often have we been scared of something and it didn't happen? So that first realization starts helping you understand that that fear is not a fact, it's happening between your two ears it's in there yeah, yeah. Uh, and from there you can start deconstructing it so what is it that i'm afraid of and then you come up with a fear which is probably an excuse and then you break it down again oh if i am afraid that whatever people will judge me what is it that i'm afraid of and you right. break it down until you have the, the real fear behind it and then from there, you can start looking at two things. Uh, one is examples of situations where you had that same fear and it didn't happen. Uh, 
uh, and it, at the country it was a success. And if it relates to an other type of fear, such as um, rich people are greedy, for instance. So I'm afraid to be to, to make money because I'm afraid I may become greedy. So uh, look for counter examples of people who are rich but who are not greedy and who at the country are making good. So these are the two main things. Uh, and then the antidote to fear is action. Take action. You know... How often have we dreaded something and the moment we start doing it, we think, was that all there was about it? You know? You know, that that's so true. And and I really love your, um, you know, one of the things that you that you coin yourself on is that you're a mentor. And I think that we all have to be living examples of what it is that we do and the messages that we send to our clients and the way in which we can help them. And the, at the end of our guest blog, we always talk about some words of advice to impart on the folks that we're going to be meeting. And I really love the two words that you use in your words of advice, and that's focus and attention. So tell us a little bit about why those two words are so important for you. Well, um, I have designed uh, an empowerment planner that is in reality the companion book of my work. Uh, and uh, recently I was sorting out old files, etc. And I came across so many interviews from, from 12 years ago where I was already saying every single day set an intention in the morning and then go about your day. And at the end of the day, Ask yourself what worked well, what was challenging, what can be improved. So the what worked well, of course, is everything to do with congratulate yourself because we're always focusing on what doesn't work. But what was challenging is, okay, I said I would do this or that and I didn't. Well, why did not, that not happen? So that you can then the next day ask yourself, so what can I improve is the next day, what can I do to actually make it happen? All of that you can only do if you stay intentional and focused. Mm -hmm. So every single day, knowing what you want to focus on and then revisiting at the end of the day, it's the principle of progression of, of the personal development, in fact. Um, mm -hmm. if, you, if you do that, it takes only five minutes a day. If five minutes in the morning for to set the intention, well, and, and I add gratitudes to that in, in the planner. Um, and then at the end of the day, what worked well, what was challenging, what can be improved and what did I learn? You know, uh, and yes, I, I absolutely love our conversation today because there's so many nuggets of information that our listening and viewing audience can use and apply in their own lives in order to overcome some of the obstacles. And I love your, your new acronym for FEAR. So I really would like to thank you very much for uh, joining us today and uh, sharing some of your words and wisdom with our viewing and listening audience. You're very welcome. We almost didn't make it because we had the time difference wrong, which explains that I'm on my mobile phone <laughs> in front of a window. But yeah, great. I, yes. I it, yeah, thank you very much. And I certainly hope that the uh, folks who have joined us today have really appreciated an introduction to the person behind the logo in another edition of Keeping It Real. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you so much for having me. Stay safe. Thank Bye. You. you too. Bye now.